Welcome guests. What a blessing it is to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. 
Make sure you like, share, and subscribe and get ready for this worship experience. Here are your weekly announcements. Check our Facebook page every Monday for our WOW playlist, the worship playlist for your week. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says that we should pray without ceasing. So join us Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 7 p.m. on the LOJ prayer line. Every Wednesday, join our young adults at 7 p.m. on Zoom for Bible study where our unit is relationship goals. Join us every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. for Ambassadors Academy on Zoom. Remember our watchword for 2020 is faith. Faithful, available, committed, and exemplary. Let's face the future together with God. A quote from our own Pastor Reginald D. Rogers Sr. During this season, continue to give to support our church. Remember, there are six ways to give. Church Center app, Givelify, Cash app, text to give by mail, or we can take it over the phone with Sister Nicole Dotson. Those are your weekly announcements. Be blessed.
Father, we thank you again for another day, another opportunity to share with your people your word. We thank you for this first Sunday experience. We come now asking that you look on us, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Send forth your word, that these your people might hear. That word take effect, causing them to render you a more diligent service. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, our Christ and King, we pray. Amen. 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 We do rev our God to all of the people of God and to all who are uh, listening, who are viewing at this time. Our prayer is that God will bless you in a mighty way. If you are unsaved and you're hearing us today, understand that you're not hearing us by accident nor incident but you're hearing us because God have determined to allow you to hear his word on today. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what thus saith the Lord. I'd like to invite your attention today to the gospel recorded by John <coughs> chapter number 13 verses 20 one through 25, uh, John chapter 13, verses 21 through 25. The words are from the King James Version. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? Then answered, Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sock. And then, and when I have dipped it, and when he had dipped the sock, he gave it to Judas Iscariot son of Simon. Amen. Amen. I'd like to share with you this thought, this idea. Self-examination. 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 When it comes to one's salvation, the proof of that salvation is in the life that we live. It's not, it's not a matter of, of, of who think you are or who does not think you are. One must come to know the Christ of God for him or her self. The proof of our salvation, again, is not, is not how often we attend on the sanctuary, but the truth of the matter is that, that, that when, when it comes to collective worship, we will desire to be in fellowship with brothers and sisters of a like mind who seek to collectively bring glory to God, to worship the true and the living God. It requires, our walk requires, that we consistently uh, do self-examination. In as much as God holds us accountable, in as much as the body of Christ holds us accountable personally, we have to learn how to hold ourselves accountable. 
we need to examine, we need to examine our, our every thought, our every motivation. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I saying what I'm, I'm saying? Does it bring God any glory? Does it edify the body of Christ? Listen, we have to, we have to consistently examine ourselves. The reason being is because in as much as you are a new, a new creature in Christ, uh, that, old, that old man is still hanging around looking for an opportunity to wag his head. Here's the our text. Uh, uh, Jesus is, is getting ready. He's getting ready uh, to go to Calvary. And you know what happens at Calvary, don't you? At Calvary, he pays, he pays the ultimate price for our salvation, that we might receive truly the grace of God. Uh, there, there are so many who, who, who would, would like to throw Calvary away. But don't you know that I, I love, Lord, I, 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 I love I love the Christ, but I, I, I get tired of Calvary. Listen, uh, the Christ would not make any sense without Calvary. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, I know we, in a, we, in a, we, 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 we like to we like to buy one get one free deal. We like to <laughs> we <laughs> we like free stuff, but we never consider the price. Amen. Never consider the price. Listen, this thing that we enjoy so, the grace of God, there was no little price paid for it. But it required, listen, the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. He became a ransom for many. That we might, listen, that we might really enjoy really enjoy the understanding of whosoever whosoever says that it doesn't make a difference uh what's in your dna it, it says it doesn't make a difference what you used to be nor even how far you have fallen whosoever listen whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved uh, it, it, it's, it's a sad thing when we try to pigeonhole folk and tell them, tell them you, uh, yeah, you, 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 you just like, you just like your mama, you just like your daddy, you just like no, 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 no. Listen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you come from. I wish I could help somebody understand that it really doesn't matter how you got here. But the reality of it is, if you're here, you're here because God wills that you be alive. Amen. God will that you be alive. Here, here again, here's our text. Jesus is on his way to Calvary. He's on his way to that skull-shaped hill. He's on his way uh, to pay the price for the salvation of every sinner who would believe. He calls together that group, and they are preparing. Uh, they're preparing now uh, for for the last supper. This is his final, following the final discourse to the people. Jesus calls them together, and he 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 shows them by example how to humble themselves you remember he, he 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 washes their feet he's the king of kings but he humbles himself he condescends to wash their feet he is the god man but he shows them not only by precept but by example how to humble 
themselves. Brothers and sisters, listen, we would really never come to know the joy of serving until we learn how to serve others. Amen. Amen. Listen, you talk about serving God. The only way to serve God is by servicing the need of our fellow man. And when we come to learn how to serve from the heart, not because somebody's going to call my name, not because uh, I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get something other than the joy of serving. Listen, when I do it because the love of God is in me, the love of God is in me. And because the love of God is in me, I, I, I need, Hear me today. I, because the love of God is in me, I need to serve somebody. Service somebody. Jesus at this point in, in, in the text, he foretells his betrayal. He, he foretells his Betrayal. And in, in telling, if we're telling his betrayal, Brother John says, <laughs> Brother John says that, 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 that Jesus was troubled in spirit. And being troubled in spirit, he testified. He's troubled in spirit, not because of what he has to endure, but he's troubled in spirit because, because uh, there's one who's got to go. There's one who's got to go. And, and, and the truth is, Jesus loved them all to the end. So he's troubled in spirit, and being troubled in spirit, he testifies. Do you know the difference between uh, testifying and just randomly talking? When he well, listen, uh, when you testify, you talk about what you know. You testify about what you have seen. And, 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 and so here it is, knowing, knowing who it was and what was going to take place. Jesus says to them, verily, verily, which is truly, truly, I said to you that one of you shall betray me. Can you fathom the idea of betrayal? To be betrayed, to be betrayed is to have had close communion with one. And they go the other way. To be, to be betrayed is, is to have walked with, yeah, along the way. And have had confidence with. And then it all goes for no. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like what happened between uh, Joab and, and David when David said, when David was, when David wrote, wrote his psalm, he was, he, was, he was wearied at the outset and he says, fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. And he goes on in that 50th psalm to talk about uh, 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 what was taking place internally because he's deeply sorrowful. He's deeply hurt because he's been betrayed by one who was supposedly his confidant. And he says, he says, he says these words, and I'll, I'll, I'll move back to the text. I just want, want you to understand what betrayal feels like. He says this, he says, we walk to the house of God in company. His, his words were smoother 
than oil. Yet they were drawn swords. They were, they were softer than butter. But yet he had war in his heart. Uh, uh, the very one that he had put, placed his confidence in was the one who was now betraying him at a time when he really needed him. The ship of state was in trouble. I wish I had time to talk about it. The ship of state was in trouble. And Joab jumped on the opposite side. You have to be, listen, listen. Uh, 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 and, and, and I'm not trying, I'm not trying to, to throw anything in between you and your relationships. But ultimately, our trust need to be first in God. One thing about him is he won't change on you. One thing about him, he won't fail you. And he will not he, he will not entertain hearsay about you. Jesus is deeply sorrowed. Here he's very sorrowful. He's, he, he's, he's moved and he says, uh, one of you shall betray me. One of you that I have handpicked. One of you who have walked with me talked with me, have sat down and meet with me. One of you who have handled me, one of you who, who really know who I am. <laughs> You're going to betray me. Man, I wish I had time to really talk about betrayal. Because, because, because what happens is, uh, uh, when, when you sit silent and sanguine about the things that go on around you, you are betraying. You are betraying. Listen, you're betraying, especially when you have the ability to make for a change. Listen, listen to this. Don't call this a friend. Don't call this a friend who entertains derogative conversation about you and, and then come back to tell you what they said. And their response is this. Their response is this. And I just said that. I didn't say nothing. But if you know it's not true, you ought to say something. If you know it's not right, you ought to say something. If you know it's not just, gosh, you ought to say something. Don't you know, listen, uh, uh, Jesus said somebody was going to betray him, but be mindful that, 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 that you and I, even in this, in this day, can betray him when we don't stand for what he stands for. When we don't correct that which is out of order, when we allow, when we allow uh, hearsay that didn't bring him glory, we ought to be mindful. But here it is: uh, the disciples are somewhat forlorn because Jesus does not call a name; he just says that one of you shall betray me. The disciples look one to the other, one to the other. John says, doubting of whom he spake. Jesus said it. By this time, they understand something about it. They do understand that when he says something, it would truly come to pass. When he spoke these words, uh, they are looking at one another and they are, they are asking, who could it be? Lord, is it me? Is it I? Listen, 
uh, I said to you at the outset that we ought to be consistently, constantly uh, examining ourselves, examining our motivation, examining why we do, Lord, uh, brothers and sisters, what we do. Here's brother. They're sitting down. I know Michelangelo uh, 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 made, made this great picture of folks sitting around the table said it was the last supper, but the truth is they sat on the floor. They sat on the floor. They leaned in, they leaned over, they were on the floor. And um, one, of, one of them leaning on, on the Lord's bosom, one of his disciples, whom he said, listen, uh, says, uh, uh, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. He's leaning on him. He's leaning on him. And Peter says, beckons to this brother, and, 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 and that, and he, won't, he actually says, he says this, this uh, uh, ask him, ask him who it is. Talking about John, I'll give that to you. He's asking. He's talking about John, and John is the John is the is the one who seemed to have more understanding about who Jesus is and his mission than everybody else. Because John constantly writes, and it came to pass, and so it was. It came to pass, and so it was, because John seemingly seems to understand that Jesus is on this divine calendar that has to be fulfilled. So he says it comes. To, it came to pass, and so it was. And so he asked John, he said, listen, I, uh, ask him, ask him who, who it is. Then he turns to Jesus and says, Lord, who is it? But I need you to understand also that everybody around the table is asking the question, is it me? Is it me? Because even though they were with him, uh, almost every day for three and a half years. Even though they had seen the miracles wrought by their hand, they were still students, they were still learners, and they often failed and paled in the face of test. So they are asking, is it, is it me? And Jesus goes on to tell them, he goes on to tell them, uh, 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 it, it's the one whom I gave the sock when I have dipped. And when he had dipped the sock, he gave it to Judas Iscariot. And at that time, the devil entered him to go on to, to do that heinous deed uh, that, 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 that brought forth, amen, that brought forth the sacrifice that would save us. Wish I had more time. Uh, remember, remember now that that this is this is this is the Lord. This is the Lord sitting with his disciples, and and uh, uh, he, he 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 sets the stage. He sets the stage for 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 what we're going to observe today, the Lord's Supper. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church, his first letter to the church at Corinth, around chapter 11, between verses 26 and 29, he says this, he says, as often as we do it, we show forth his death and suffering until he comes again. As often as we do it, we show forth the death and suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, until he comes again. But he grants us this bit of information, you know, the question was asked around the table, uh, is it me? He says, he's, Paul says, uh, we really need to examine ourselves. Before we partake of uh, this sacred memorial, we ought examine ourselves. Listen, when I was a boy, when I was a boy, I used to hear some strange things. From church going people. 
Sometimes, sometimes there would be, there would be individuals uh, who would not partake of the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday night, Brother Young, because uh, they, they said, they said uh, they wouldn't take it because somebody was angry with them. Or they did not take it because they were angry with somebody. I don't feel right. You ought not feel right. Anytime you allow anger to reside in your bosom to the point where you want to have a, you really want to have a disconnect with what the master have commanded. Man, I wish I had time. Listen, that, this is the only thing that the Lord, uh, the Lord says he wants you to remember him by. This is what he says as he establishes the memorial. He says, this do, do this in remembrance of me. This is what he says, do it in remembrance of me. And you mean somebody's going to have so much power in your life that you will deny the memorial of the Lord because you said somebody was mad at you? That's between, listen, let nothing separate you from the love of God, the things that God loves, the truth of God. Let nothing separate, let nothing get in between you and the Lord. I won't take it because I'm mad. Listen, brothers and sisters, God really does expect us to have some kind of self-control. And there's no way that we're going to pray and pray right and the Spirit of God not convict us when it comes to the things of God. I wish I had a witness here. The apostle says to the church of Corinth and says to us today that we ought examine ourselves. Examine ourselves. Listen, I, 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 I'm coming to the Lord's table. I'm getting ready to partake of a sacred memorial. Uh, uh, is there anything in me that, 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 that does not reflect the glory of God, the goodness of God, I need to pray right away and ask God if I'm weak, listen, if I'm so weak that, 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 it can't be, that, that it can't move it, I need to ask God, move it, clean me up, clean me out, fix me because I'm so attached to you that I want to come to your table right. I want to partake of the memorial with the right frame of reference, with the right spirit. When I come to the, come to the table, when I come to the table, when you come to the table, when we come to the table, we ought to remember something. We ought to remember something. Remember that he was wounded for our transgression, that he was bruised for our iniquity. Remember that the, that the price of our peace was upon him with his sacrificial death. Breaking of his body, the shedding of his blood on a faraway hill because, listen, because of what he did, we're able to enjoy eternal life but I need you to remember that that's not it that the eternal life didn't come after a while and by and by but while we are yet here listen I am saved and I will be saved when he saved us he saved us and he sealed us for all time but don't you know don't you know I said to you earlier that uh, that old man is waiting on an opportunity to come in and wag his head. That's why, again, brothers and sisters, it's, it, it, it's, it's totally necessary that we examine ourselves. So when it comes, when it comes to that question, uh, 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 who's going to do it, you won't have to say, Lord, is it I? But, 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 but Lord, I'm available to you. Lord, I am tied to you. Lord, I'm committed 
to you. Whatever way you want to use me, use me, Lord. He paid that price. He paid that price. And he lives today. According to the scripture on the third day, he got up victorious over death and the grave. He secured the victory for us. I'm victorious. You're victorious. We are victorious, not because of us, but our victory is in Jesus. God bless you. God bless you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, our Christ, our King, again we come thanking you for life and thanking you for salvation. Thank you for your amazing grace that granted us an opportunity to know you personally. Come now asking that you look on of those who are viewing, who don't know you as a personal savior, who don't, who don't know you as, as, as Lord of their lives. Praying that you would touch hearts, that you would touch minds, that you would grant them a glimpse of, the, of your all and know that it comes only through the connection with your son, uh, whom, whom it pleased you to bruise on our behalf. The greater love, Father, we know not. We ask now for the salvation of sinner. Touch that man, that woman, the boy, girl, who's listening now, and grant them, O oh God, the opportunity to be saved. We ask it all in Jesus' name for the sake of the church and kingdom building. Amen. 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 Again, the Lord has blessed us to have another first Sunday experience where we observe the memorial the Lord has left here for us. He said that he wanted to be remembered by this, and it's a good focal point for all that we do. He gave his life that we might have life, that we might have a right to the tree of life. He hung, he bled, he died to pay the penalty of our sins. But on the third day, he rose for our justification, that we might be in fellowship and in right standing with God, our Father. Truly, we thank God for the Christ. This time we ask Brother Byron Fondren, if he will ask the Lord's blessing over this cup and over this morsel of bread. Body and the shed and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Those who are viewing at home might use the items in your home. Juice, water. Piece of cracker, bread. It's not so much the instrument as it is the memorial in your heart. Amen. This time we ask that you prepare your heart and your mind to partake of this memorial. Friends, death is in every passing breeze and it lurks in every flower. Each season carries its own disease and it purges every hour with its understanding if we don't rise again, it is well with our souls. Let us eat and drink together the body and the blood of our Lord.
after the hymn, after the supper, they sang a hymn and went to the Mount of Olives. There he, he prays. We ask that on this day that you keep in mind the great sacrifice that was made for your salvation. Always remember when you, when you, when you come to the point of indecision, always remember that, that he paid the price for us. And when you are truly converted, listen, when you're truly converted, whatever happened before you came to know him, it really doesn't matter right now. Amen. For again, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. Father, again, we thank you now for the gift of your son, for our magnificent Savior. Thank you for your love so much that you gave him. Thank you for his love so much that he submitted himself to the will of the Father. Help us now to submit even as our Savior submitted. For all things are accomplished in and through him. Help us, O oh God, to ever be mindful each and every day. Help us to be consistent in checking ourselves, making sure that we are living according to your plan. We ask it all in Jesus' name. For the sake of the church and kingdom building, amen. 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 Thank you for joining us. I hope you all enjoyed this worship experience. Until next time, be blessed.